Hey YouTube, this is the third episode today that I've done, and all of these are were originally going to be one giant episode, but well, my camera's being stupid, and please bear with the very, very low quality. Um, eventually I'm actually going to pre-record these and all that, but for today I want to do everything, and I just got excited, and yeah. But anyway, so in this next section, I just guess I kind of want to talk about books. Yay, books. Woo! And there's no rhyme or reason to this. I just actually wanted to talk about books. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take a whole session just to do it. So, basically, I'm going to break down. I'm going to suggest a book to you all, or a manga specifically. This is one of my favorite mangas of all time. Last Fantasy. Now, as far as I know, there's only five mangas. It's really hilarious. And it takes basically the premise of Final Fantasy and other style role-playing game funness and makes fun of it in a very exciting, adventurous, great artworky, like, yeah, show you the artwork. I love the artwork, you know, silly way where you have the warrior who is a complete idiot and you have the mage who is a magic school dropout who only knows how to cast a fireball, but he's good at it. I would suggest this to anyone. I love this book series or this manga series. I've read it a couple times. It is amazing. Um, second, talking about a book I want to I want to read now. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of like dark and low fantasy, especially barbarian based, like lack of a better term, violent smut. Um and I picked up 20 some odd books in a series. I got like, or not 20 some odd, I actually bought like 19 of them. I have something like 15 more books in the series or something like that to get. There's like either 32 or 36, so that's why I'm just saying a random number that would add up. But, um, that adds up to 34, but we, we won't go there. But the book series, I'm going to start reading this. I'll tell you how it is once I get into it. Is Gore. Now, I already know. I've read all of the reviews. I know the last few books pretty much go into misogynistic smut. But I actually read the first chapter of this book already. And the whole idea is unique. It's actually a really unique chapter. And honestly, the writing style wasn't that bad. Now, if it holds up to that, I'll let you all know. And I'll let you know as I'm reading it. But I just wanted to mention that. And then lastly, I kind of want to talk about role playing books. And I know I'm all over the place here, but I'm a 3.5 player. I am loyal to 3.5. I'm a 3.5 girl. I know Pathfinder people out there, I know you think it's great. I don't like very overpowered things as I'm playing this book around, oh my god, the first class. I don't like a lot of heavy power and I, I restrict myself in 3.5 and I also make a lot of my monsters a lot more tough for my people who go through the dungeons, but um, I want to bring up this book because I think it's actually an underused book, at least in the circles I'm in. What this is, is it took three new concepts for magic, and they work in this, they actually kind of require you to have standard wizards in your world, but just to give examples, first you have the pack mage who takes through sigils and arcane awesomeness, binds entities to them, granting them supernatural powers. Now this, when I say, like, overpowered, this class can be overpowered if the DM does not take in the role-playing effect. Okay, in the world, these are supposed to be looked down upon, they're supposed to be hated. Now they even have a type of monster, or not monster, but a type of uh, opponent called Witch Hunter in here that specifically hunts them down. Which, that's their flaw if you're not in a heavy, heavy roleplay group. Don't use pack mages, you know. But if you're in a good roleplay group who really focuses more on roleplaying versus roleplaying, if you know what I mean, pack mages work really well. And basically, you, your character some flames book around, but draw these sigils on the ground. However the book says they have to be summoned. And 
monster comes or the eldritch entity comes and all these are beyond God's touch and says, hey, what do you want? You strike up a bargain with them and they grant you their powers. But they also mark you and that can lead to some bad juju if you're run into that as a campaign. Second, I like this class, so I think it's actually not that powerful of a class. Shadow Magic. No. Shadow Mage is supposed to be the elemental or the opposite of standard magic where you study mysteries and using drawing from the shadow realm you're pulling off spells, you know, basic spells that are kind of in their own way different than a normal mage and how it reflects is you're actually using the opposite of magic is actually separated from the actual normal magic instead of pulling from the elemental planes like you do in normal D&D you're pulling from the shadow realms and last, and this is my favorite in this book the true name mage now this again, this is one for a role play group though the class itself isn't really that powerful in my opinion I don't know, I haven't break, broken it yet but I'm sorry, I'm like just looking through trying to get to the point, kind of as an example. But you take these other instances and you have a very small spell list and you have to make true speak checks to cast them. Now, what they suggest, and I do suggest this too, is you write down a word for each of your spells and when you cast them, you have to say that word. It gives a great role play element and I am a huge fan of role play. Now, another thing these did. And this is something I love because they have one of my favorite. I said the true speak section, sorry. They have one, a continuation of one of my favorite campaigns. Is each one has a dungeon, and I know one's at, at least one is a reference to an old second edition campaign that I loved. It was one of my favorite campaigns growing up. I've probably been through it twice. Here's the map, just give you an example. But no, it was a great reference. It was a great callback from my second edition days to the point where I want to roll Thacko while playing. As a book, I suggest this pick this up for your 3.5 collection. And, you know, personally, I think it's worth to have, period. Well, thank you. I'll talk to you later.